Good morning, Lagos. Welcome back. This is Lagos Talks 981 on your swim. 98.1 Love Music Love Life Station. Valentine Ohu and I am Mario Essay. Here to steer the ship of this show, of this particular segment. Now this is the point yes. where we open the phone lines and at some point and you get to call and talk. We usually take the hottest story from Freshly Fresh and once in a while, like today, we have a special. Now this is actually um, from and a previous edition of Freshly Fresh, one of the topics that was really hot and we thought it was important to bring in experts to weigh in on this. And that is the story on GMO in Nigeria um, being approved for the first time genetically modified crop um, despite controversy was approved by the Nigerian government. And that so, was a story from Premium Times, uh, the Premium Times publication of 29th of January 2019. And we noticed that the reaction from across quarters, you know, have different uh, sentiments regarding GMO. And uh, being the first time it's, it's been introduced officially in Nigeria, raises a lot of concerns and questions. That's right, and today we're going to be making a case for it. GMO in Nigeria, pros and cons. Now don't forget, at any point during the conversation, feel free to call in, you can ask questions, you can make your contributions, or just, you know, air, you know, just air your concerns generally. If you'd like to call, the number is 01448-9981. That's 01448-9981. If you'd rather send a message on WhatsApp, then here's the number to um, send the message to. Our WhatsApp number for your messages only. Our WhatsApp number is 0809-444-0981. That is 0809-444-0981. Our special guest for today's Legal Stocks special is Farmer Ike, that's what we'll call him. But his name is Ikechuku Wanko, and he's uh, 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 as well one of the major facilitators of a, a growing agricultural firm in Lagos. Yes, you're welcome, Farmer Ike. Thank you very much. Thank uh, you very much for coming. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We also invited Dr. Patrick Ijeri. Uh, he's a professional, and he's a very strong proponent of uh, against well proponent. <laughs> <laughs> for organic products and uh, speaks a lot against the introduction of uh, GMO. So just to have a balanced conversation, we had to invite him and hopefully he gets here in time. Uh, he was caught up in an emergency this morning because he had to attend to a patient, but hopefully he, he gets uh, coming before the second break. Uh, a debate between the farmer and the doctor. We'll just <laughs> definitely hear your thoughts on this one. Now, very, very, just to start from a very basic one, because I remember when we had this news story, a number of people didn't actually understand what it was. Some people had an idea, but when you talk about genetically modified foods, what's the general idea? What is GMO? What are GMO foods? All right. Um, what's my say? Good morning uh, mm -hmm. to Lagos. Um, GMO, like uh, say it is genetically modified organism, uh, we have that in plant, we have that in animal, and uh, the scientists are also looking at uh, transferring some genes also to human in the area of um, those that have sickle cell, how to remove that and all that. Um, many people uh, misconcept that GMO. What it means is, uh, let's say for example in plant, is taking uh, a gene from a plant or an animal that will make another plant resistant to some uh, form of uh, either herbicide yeah. or paste, you know, that will increase the, the yield on the farm. And uh, though there are some school of thought that there may be some side effects and other things like that, but the major thing is to increase agricultural production and also to make food more available for the people mm. right. i mean i like that you you made that definition and made it clear in that sense taking a gene from one organism and infusing it in another to resist uh, certain environmental factors or pet, you know yeah. like artificial factors yeah. as well but certain schools of thought have argued that that upsets the natural balance of things in a sense that <laughs> if you plant to introduce a gmo crop into an organic area it's really affects the other organic products it probably in some sense they say it impoverishes the other plants it takes away from their nutrients on a large scale affects their growth and so in that sense would you say it acts as a pest what? and it's it, would it be i mean would you say it's, it's dangerous it's bad for business when it's introduced in such environments yeah it depends on it depends largely on uh, the regulation mm. of the use of gmo um, if I plant GMO, for example, and you, Val, in your own farm, you do an organic, mm. 
um, it is wise that you protect your own organic uh, plants. You know, just like even using hybrid hybrid seeds yes. that are not GMO. Now, if you plant a hybrid sweet corn here, mm. and your neighbor is planting the normal ordinary corn, mm. when the insects come to take the pollen grain, like a butterfly, or even be take the pollen grain from the sweet corn back to that that's your ordinary corn, mm. that your ordinary corn will have some treat of um, sweetness in it. Yeah. And when they transfer that ordinary corn to the sweet corn, the sweet corn will not be as sweet as it ought to be. Why? Because of the uh, uh, tra the pollination. Now, so if you plant a GMO plant and uh, 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 somebody else is planting the conventional one, when those plant those uh, 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 insects like butterfly or bee, you know, agent of pollination, takes those pollen grain from the GMO. To uh, 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 the conventional, it will alter their uh, natural state, mm. as in they won't uh, produce what they ought to produce naturally. Mm. Another thing we must also understand uh, is this: uh, some school of thought have come to say, okay, oh well, yeah, what you now need to do is to uh, produce a, a, a GMO plant that the gene cannot be transferred by butterfly or by insect. Okay. But when you do that, if those genes affect those insects yeah. and we lose lots of the insects you have, uh, 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 the natural crop will not uh, 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 be able to uh, multiply anymore. Yeah. Just like some cases of uh, the USA today, uh, we have over 95% of all crops produced in the US mm. as GMO. All right, now I'm glad you referred to the United States of America with regards to GMO. We know that in terms of the use of GMO, they are probably one of the leaders mm. around the world, and that's in terms of food production, mm. higher yield, and of course cheaper, cheaper food as well. Now, the the it, it's important. I would like to also highlight the fact that what was approved by the government was the crop, the PBR cow pea, mm. and one of the reasons why they said this is that there's a low yield in crop production due to insect. You know, um, the the effect of insects on this on, on on the crops. As a farmer, naturally, I would assume that you would welcome this development. However, have you also looked at the other side with regards to concerns raised by activists who say that GMO foods are not particularly good for the health of those who eat, eat them? Okay, the one thing we must understand is um, there's different types of GMO. The GMO in U.S. is not the same thing as the GMO in Nigeria. What is the difference? Now, uh, the GMO in U.S., uh, let's say the one with the BT corn, uh, is largely against warm pesticide, also against herbicide. Mm. So what you do now is you can plant the, the corn and spray glyphosate on them and nothing will, uh, the glyphosate will not affect the corn. All this uh, boras will not affect the corn also. Mm. Some of them, once they eat them, they have uh, intestine disorder and they will die. You know, that is different from the, the one in Nigeria. The one in Nigeria uh, that uh, Madhu Benlo University and the researchers there mm. uh, brought out about uh, the uh, Marocos virus and uh, how to help in cow pee mm. is uh, just only on that paste. All right. Now just hold that thought, um, Farmer Ike, we'll have to go on a break right now, but when we come back, we'll continue this conversation. Now, Lagos, don't forget, this is your opportunity to ask any questions you might have to clarify or to set your heart at rest or to raise certain concerns on GMO foods and the, and the, and the approval recently made by the government. We'll be back. This is Lagos Talks 981 on Smooth 981. We're talking quality music. We're talking smooth. Thank you. I like when you mentioned the research findings and then the fact that the, this is a product of research from our fellow investors. Mm -hmm. so the next round of questions will come from that angle and uh, we, we, we really need to start a new call. Oh, is it that time? No. Oh, okay. Is it? No. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I was excited. Because it would be nice to have a. No, that's but I guess that some people will call and, uh, yeah. and challenge that. No, no, I hope you're ready. No, well, I'm trying. Yeah, no problem. No, I'm trying to balance it. Uh, I, I noticed it's in local But what's that? What's that? I don't know, but whenever it comes, I'm 
trying to balance it in a way. I don't want to. Uh, yeah, no, no, I don't good. want to I mean, sound as if I'm supporting it in totality. Yeah. It's okay. In a way, it comes out with the next day. No, they are. My studio. Just joining us, and uh, this is a special presentation on Lagos Talks 981, and it's uh, a, a special that's designed to look into genetically modified organisms. That's the GMO introduction of the first genetically modi uh, modified crop introduced, as uh, we found out in the news on the 29th of January 2019, and it was uh, based on the offshoot of the production of the first genetically modified crop. The Pod borer resistant cowpea, popularly called beans, uh, from the Amadabello University and Institute for uh, Agricultural Research. Uh, from that, they said that the, one of the primary motives uh, for my hype was uh, to give it the capability to resist the Maruka vitrata pests, which is the pest that's uh, uh, you know that, that's majorly attacked uh, the cowpea. Now we mentioned, I mean, before the show started, we we're having a conversation downstairs, and we mentioned that uh, this cowpea is majorly produced in Nigeria. Yeah, sure. And uh, we understand from the stories we've heard in the news, uh, a lot of people have been complaining that there's been the, to use the colloquial term, killer beans, mm. being proliferated and available in the market. And people have been, well, they have been seen in the market in, in, in times past. People have been complaining of the dangers that that poses to consumption. Because at the end of the day, it, it ends up in our stomach. Yeah. If, if you boil it, no matter how long you boil, you know how long it takes to mm -hmm. So if you boil it for that long, uh, we noticed uh, from reports that we've heard from different quarters that it doesn't necessarily take away the insecticide, which unfortunately has been used by farmers to preserve, you know, such crops. So, uh, I mean, take us through the fact, the practices that common farm, or rather, rather, farmers these days, you know, uh, have uh, to employ in preserving the, uh, the crops. Uh, 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 actually, uh, also, I was a victim of the. Um Bodbara last year, mm. I planted uh, a lot of beans, and uh, at the initial stage they were doing very great. Uh, and I decided I don't want to use pesticide on them. Mm. Uh, I just want to make it uh, purely organic. Uh, before three weeks to harvest, I started seeing some of those uh, insects come, and uh, truly, I never harvested anything. In fact, what I just had to do was to take the waste. Uh, uh, um, plant to my goats so they can eat them instead I, I'm I'm supposed to make a lot of profit from them now you see what uh, we do and what some people must really understand is that some uh, insecticide or some things that kill some animals don't kill human being uh, like salt you take salt and uh, you eat salt mm -hmm. it will not disturb your system like that will kill snail for example yeah. or even earthworm for example mm -hmm. there are some animals that don't like uh, um, cayenne pepper mm -hmm. when you keep them they, as they smell them they will die up mm -hmm. but you you eat them and there's no problem mm -hmm. you know so when some things that you call um something that you call um dangerous for some animals mm -hmm. they are actually useful for um plants yeah. for uh, plants and those that you said some dangerous for some plants are useful so for some uh, for some animals yeah. now coming to that your question mm -hmm. you see um, uh, the way we preserve food in this country is dangerous and mm -hmm. it's very bad mm -hmm. uh, when we talk about the GMO cow pea mm -hmm. 
we are not talking about using pesticide now to preserve them. Mm. We saw a lot of things uh, in on social media mm. where some people use sniper, they use lots of other uh, um, insecticide, insecticide mm. to preserve their beans. Right, let, me, let me just cut you here just for a moment because uh, you mentioned something in reference to GMO and this is really um, important because this is one of the one of the challenges in the state to using genetically modified foods and scientists have come to say that because of the deviant pace at which you know it has been developed it has come into um, into circulation there's not enough time to understand the long-term effect of gmo foods on human beings use examples of cayenne pepper salt and other organisms that might not affect humans and at the moment seemingly you know there are not so for some of these things there are no obvious um, backlashes but we know that in some cases these things happen years after and we don't know that yet so that's one of the criticisms of using GMO foods. Uh, World Health Organization um, I, I believe is, we all know is a reputable organization with great integrity yeah and uh, once they tell you this then it's good I don't think we should argue that that much before the scientists uh, bring uh, those GMO to play yeah. uh, so that we can grow them they must have carried a lot of tests. Uh, actually, there's uh, a uh, research I saw, which many other scientists did counter research on. You know, some people, uh, the, a man in the uh, um, US, yep. uh, they tried to um, research using some potatoes, you know, those with GMO, those with non-GMO, and those with insecticide. And the result of his um, uh, uh, research said that those uh, that ate the GMO, they died in 10 days. Wow. Then other counter research were done, and they found out that it wasn't really true. You know, So we continue to grow. When you say, OK, because this thing is new, we don't want to try it, yeah. even the car would drive, for example, you, you watch no, the way no, no, it's no, it's not in the same context, like but I, I, won't, I won't be the one to argue with you because like uh, earlier in the show we did mention that we were expecting someone from the health um, sector who was going to be speaking as well on this platform. Uh, Lagos, we have Dr. Patrick Ijerere in the studio and I'm sure he's itching to air his views. I hope, I'm sure you, you probably have been listening to Karma Ike on your way here and you might have one or two things to say in response to what he has been saying. Now before Dr. Patrick speaks, just to remind you that you can also get talking Lagos Please call the number 01448 The number again is 01448 Dr. Patrick Ijeri, you're welcome. Good morning, Valentine. Good morning, Mama Ike. <laughs> Thank you very much. I've read about me for many, many times. Thank you very much. Oh, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> welcome. Uh, so, I'm understanding that you've had, you have a lot to say, Dr. Patrick, about GMO. So, um, from your own perspective, let us understand. Give us a, a clear idea of your perspective to GMOs and the practice and your reaction to the eats introduction in Nigeria. Okay, there are several perspectives to GMO. Mm. There's a basic veg science, there's a clinical science, mm. there's the economic impact, there's the agricultural impact, there's the um, what I call the ethno horticultural impact. And GMOs are not new. They've been in the US now for almost 30 years, maybe 28, 29 years. Okay? So we have a laboratory that has already been existing yeah. in the US. Mm -hmm. Let me address initially from the global perspective. Many countries around the world, I think, especially in the EU, have one reason or the other banned the cultivation of GMO. Some of our had banned the importation of any GMO products. These are countries with superior scientific, analytical, and technical prowess. Now, Mama Ike talked about the benefits of GMO, the increased yield. And we need to be careful when these economic terms are thrown up at us, you know, the Bureau yield and all that. Let me break it down very simply. Okay. You have a bag of cement. Mm -hmm. You've been building houses. Normally your bricklayer says this bag of cement will give you 25 solid blocks. I go to my across the road comes and says, ah, oh God, that cement I will build you, I will make you 40 or 50 mm. blocks. Mm. 
who gives the higher yield? Your people here or Agora across the street? They are across the street. Beautiful. But the quality is in question. Which block will you buy to build your house? The, the first one. First one. Okay. When we talk about yield, what goes into the plant is coming from somewhere. It's coming from the soil. So let's go to the soil. The nutrients that you're coming talking about, if you say it's 20, kids, 20, 20 tons of bumper harvest, it starts with the soil. What are you doing to the soil? Mm. That's where the nutrients come from, not from the sky. Mm. So if you say there's higher yield, you must be putting more things into the soil to improve the soil productivity. Mm. Today, the most common fertilizer we use is three ingredients, NPK, mm. whereas soil requires about 55 nutrients. The issue of cowpea up north, we can talk about later, because I debated this in a, in a forum in, in Abuja. Which was an issue we raised earlier. Nobody given a soil analysis mm. that there's something wrong with the soil, why the cowpea um, um, yield is low. None of the scientists from our universities gave me a soil analysis. Okay. When you apply a pesticide or herbicide to the soil, what happens? You destroy the nutrient, the microorganisms in the soil. Those microorganisms are responsible for your nutrient release that the plants absorb in their roots. Right. Anybody do the simple test at home. Get fresh soil that has maggots, earthworms, you name it inside it. Just have two samples. One sample pour in glyphosate, most popular herbicide that is used with most GMO products, made by the same company actually. And watch what happens to the microorganisms in that soil. If you are able to create a small screen to help their soil, you see that even the earthworms will migrate to the site where there is no chemical in the soil. Okay? So the agents that create soil fertility have been killed or damaged by these herbicides. When they say pesticides have no value, no, no use anymore because of this pesticide resistant BT or whatever you call it, excuse me, hogwash. Brazil, go online. Brazil is one of the highest users of, of um, herbicide, in particular glyphosate. Why? Because they are seeing resistance. They're getting crops today that are resistant to even the regular doses of herb herbicide. You have to use herbicides when you use GMO. That is the fact, globally. So let us talk about, you don't use more pesticide anymore because of pesticide resistance. Pure scientific hogwash. Okay, all right, so understanding your perspective, Dr. Patrick, thank you very much for being so um, elaborate in your analysis and of course uh, the examples you've given. Uh, seeing this from uh, the perspective of the farmers, for instance, I mean, I'll, I'll throw this question to you for my eye. We understand that you're very concerned about your yield and how much money you make from it. And Dr. Patrick, you see, feel free to weigh in on this. Uh, over time, we've heard complaints from different farmers uh, from across Nigeria, complaining about, especially even in agricultural produce, that the silos that we have are across Nigeria have been affected. The storage, the, the products that have been stored in the silos, the major concern and the major problems that have been, you know, reducing the, the, the yield and affecting the crops that are being stored is the infestation of pests. And this has led to loss of millions of Naira in produce. So how do you mitigate these problems? Because these problems are real. I would like to um, please, uh, Val, I would like to uh, kind of um, interject to what he said. Uh, mm -hmm. One thing we much really understand is we don't necessarily, uh, there are three things uh, needed by plants to grow. Number one is light, number two is water, mm -hmm. and number three is nutrients. The soil is just a medium to hold them. The soil is just a medium to hold them. Now, when you talk about um, herbicide, mm -hmm. You, you mustn't use herbicide when you plant GMO. If you plant GMO, you have the chance, uh, you have the choice to either weed or like the one the one in Nigeria now, the cowpea. Mm. It's not resistant to herbicide. Mm. As in the cowpea now, it's not resistant to herbicide. So you can, if, even if you want to use the herbicide now on the cowpea, mm. you have to be very careful so that the herbicide let's say the glyphosate, will not touch the, the beans mm. or, or, or the cowpea, if you want to call it that. Yeah. Then uh, the local farmers can go ahead to make use of their hoe to do the traditional weeding on their cowpea. Okay, so, but why, so you why, can why, why? actually plant a GMO cowpea mm. and perform organic functions on them. So why do you use herbicides? Because I understand from my basic understanding of, in agriculture, yeah. cultural science from secondary school, I know that herbicides are used to... Uh, get rid of unwanted plants, which yeah. are characterized as weeds. Yeah. So to save cost of weeding manually, you yeah. use the herbicides. Yes. I mean, isn't that a problem in itself? No, no. why people use herbicides is uh, one, 
we're trying to um, embrace the technology to reduce the time you spend by within, the stress you spend by within, that herbicide truly has adverse effect yes. on both the farmer, yeah. because you breathe in those things, mm -hmm. you know, and that affects you. Right. Also, you have adverse effect on also the crop. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you may mistakenly spray that herbicide on your crop and they will die. Mm -hmm. All right. There's different types of herbicide. Now, on the GMO, there's different type of GMO. There are some plants that are genetically, genetically modified to resist some herbicide. And there are some that are only for paste. Like the one we're talking about now, the cowpea, it was just for uh, the paste, not for the herbicide. So if you're a farmer and you want to use the herbicide on your farm, you have to be very, very careful so that that uh, uh, herbicide will not touch the leaves or the roots of your plant. We're going to come back to you, Doctor, because I know that I know you're you're eager to reply to that, but we do have to take a break. All right. When we come back we'll take it from the angle of uh, reacting to we will take it from the angle of reacting to uh, the, the allusion you just made that herbicides yeah. do not affect uh, the plants because I mean Dr. Patrick before you spoke yeah. mentioned that the herbicides not only affect the plants but kill the organisms that produce the nutrients that you named as one of the three major factors that contribute to the growth of the plants. But and, okay, now, it's important to also ask about super reeds, mm, Mama Ike, because yes. when you talk about herbicides, um, one of the biggest concerns and fears that scientists have brought up is that crops are planted, genes escape their seeds and fall into weedy relatives, creating what we call super reeds, that are able to actually resist herbicides. So, actually, um, GMOs, just like what um, Dr., um, Dr. Patrick was saying, they actually develop super reeds that are resistant to this I think we need to about. understand and this, this clearly. There is difference between herbicide yeah. and GMO uh, seeds yeah. or GMO plant. You can plant GMO plant and not use herbicide. Okay, alright. I see Dr. Patrick shaking his head. Maybe I'll let him come in here. Dr. Patrick. Yeah. Like I said when, I, when we began, there's no need to reinvent the wheel. Just look at the data that's already existing. Go to countries that have been involved with GMO for 20, 15, and 10 years. Go to Brazil, go to Argentina, go to Colombia, go to the USA. You have to apply herbicide. Brazil is the world's largest importer of glyphosate, herbicide made by the same GMO content that we also want to talk about. And they're complaining about the side effects of the herbicide. Super weeds are a problem. Please. Let's, I need to, the minute issues I need to move on to. This issue of herbicide. Let's, All right, let's so we'll move on to that. Listeners, go online, do your research, and judge on this issue of herbicide. Oh, so, let's, let's sorry, that, sorry, please. please uh, before the listeners go online to check, <laughs> okay. I want the listeners also to check why do you apply herbicide? Mm. We, would, we would like for you, you know, to tell us that. Uh, uh, let, let, me, let me touch. Part of it is our ignorance. Mm. The herbs we see as things that destroy or take nutrients away from the other, other, other plants. Yeah. Then, though, 90% of anti-cancer drugs today are found in plants in the wild that today we will call weeds. 90% of the anti-cancer plants to, to, that we use, drugs that we use today, had their beginnings from weeds. From things that we call weeds. Mm. So you I can, I can, I can, I can name a few right drugs, mm. give them some scientific names. Mm. When you plant GMO, you destroy the natural balance. You cannot find organic plants or natural plants to use for scientific purposes. Nigeria, we're sitting on our own gold mine, which is our herbs. Mm. Go to NNMDA, yes. Nine Kofa Bayomi Road. There's a library there where they documented the late, the, sorry, the previous um, DG carried research on Nigeria to document the amount of uses of Nigerian plants. There's mm. a, there's several volumes. Mm. So many of our plants have natural medicinal value. Once you plant GMO, you destroy the medicinal value of that area, All right. of those plants. Thank that's you. That's that discussion. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Patrick. Thank you, Farmer Ike. The debate is still on. And in case you're just tuning in, the topic on Lagos Talk Special, Lagos Talks 981 Special this morning is GMO in Nigeria, pros and cons. And we have um, the privilege of having 
Dr. Patrick Wheat, a health specialist, and of course, Farmer Ike, who is a farmer. I will go on a quick break right now. When we come back, the, con the, the conversation continues. We will read some of your questions and you know points you've raised on WhatsApp and also take some of your calls. This is Snooze 91. <laughs> you know one thing is we are calling it herbicide. <laughs> we are calling it herbicide. Uh, well, because we are calling it herbicide does not mean that you are, what you are killing is a weed. And what is weed? Weeds are unwanted plants. No, weeds are plants we don't know what their value is. The definition of it. You a far, if you're a farmer, if you're a farmer, you said weeds are unwanted plant in the farm. What you planted was maize. But you are, if you get if you have guinea corn in you that place, guinea corn is not what you planted. The guinea corn is a weed for your maize. So when you call it herbicide, okay, so it's not okay, 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 as if you say herb. Guinea corn takes nitrogen from the air mm -hmm. and puts it into the soil, mm -hmm. which the corn uses um, it in its growth and development. All plant oh, ignorance is killing us. All plant dandelion, is all a, dandelion is a major weed. Today there are three and the cancer drug made from dandelion. I can give you so many examples. It is our ignorance that is making the corn is called herbicide. No. Haven't said that. There are natural ways to deal with, 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 with weeds. Mm. Natural ways to deal with weeds. There are lots of ways. We, I'm without, without using chemicals. I want you to also know I'm an integrated farmer. I don't right, do chemicals. We're coming GM. back shortly. Okay. We're coming, we're coming back okay. shortly. <laughs> <laughs> So once once I say mic, it means the, the mics are up. So please no comment until we we'll come back online. No Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. So the mics are coming up now. If you just join us, Lagos, we are having a special uh, presentation of Lagos Talks 981. It's a part of Smith's Breakfast with Ayo. And Valentine. And this morning, Lagos, we have two special guests, Dr. Patrick Ijeri. He's uh, very seasoned in, uh, when it comes to organic products and advising his patients. Really, always you hear him talking about, uh, you know, patients going through the route of, you know, taking organic products and using uh, uh, well, natural means to solve problems, health problems that we encounter. And Farmer Ike is a, an astute farmer. He goes into integrated farming, is uh, well versed in issues of agriculture. So we brought both of them to have this balanced conversation on GMOs, especially as it was introduced by the federal government recently. On the 29th of January 2019, there was a report on Premium Times uh, that had this the headline, Despite Controversy, Nigeria Approves First Genetically Modified Crop. And they called it the pod bora resistant cowpea, popularly called beans. And uh, they said that the GMO was uh, designed by uh, an agricultural research institute at Manuel University, a part of that, that university, based uh, on the findings that the, the major pest that affects that uh, crop, the cowpea, is the Maruka vitrata. Now, we've been having a, heat, a very interesting conversation before now, but Lagos yeah. would encourage you to call us on 144 if you'd like to send a message on WhatsApp, you can send the message to 0809 The number again is 0809 We have some calls. some calls. Hello, good morning. Good morning. What's your name and where are you calling from, please? Welcome, Sir Shibu. All right, thank you very much, Sashable. <laughs> Gentlemen? All right, uh, it's not a product of the GMO. It's uh, basically the way you process it. Mm -hmm. uh, those Gary you see in Lagos here, they are processed for uh, co in a commercialized way. Which one? The one that rises? The one, no, the one he, he that, said that, that smells. That, yeah. You know, the, the way they process them, you know, there's different, in, in my village, before you could, uh, I don't want to take us on how to process no, Gary here. Okay, um, after grinding the Gary, mm -hmm. you know, you have to uh, uh, make sure it's dried yes. before you sieve mm -hmm. and you fry. Yes. 
some people uh i don't want to mention some places okay. the way they process their their own gary after grinding they have to uh, allow it to ferment and some of them they don't even fry they just dry it you know after uh, um sieving they just dry it like that you know so some people it depends on your the way you process the gary it's not that that cassava is gmo Cassava. So which one smells? Among the other, is it the, the one that's not the one that is not well fried. Oh, I see. The so one that's, that's not, not well fried. Preserved. That's so not well. Yeah. Yeah. Preservation. You wouldn't have a long shelf life. Yeah. Obviously. I think also before because it's not cooked. Yeah. Because yeah. frying itself is a form of cooking, right? No, it's yeah. Of yeah yes. Mm. And some people they even after drying they just pre-fry and mm. then bag them, you know, Immediately. because they just want to push them into the market. So it has so nothing to do with GMO. It's not GMO, it's <laughs> okay. not GMO. But I think that's important because, I mean, these are the kind of questions we welcome. Mm. If you have, and, we have experts in the studio this morning and some people have genuine concerns. I just, you know, everyday things that you might want to highlight and I'm glad that you clarified that because some people might um, be wondering. We have more calls. Hello, good morning. Good morning to you. What is your name, please? Where, where are you calling from, Dr. Henry? All right, please share your thoughts or questions if you have one. Yes. Okay. Okay. Mm. That's right. Mm. Mm. Thank you. Lots of them. Dr. Henry, thank you very much. All right, thank you. Thank you for your call. Thank you very much. Did you have a response? Dr. Patrick, I see. I appreciate it. Dr. Henry's um, sharing with us. Mm. The last comment he made, I would like to address that. Okay. The world is moving towards organic food. In the US, the the fastest growing agric sector is the organic food sector. Well, a year and a half ago, I was at a conference in Abuja, an African organic conference. Books from different countries. The Ugandan team knocked everybody off their, off the, off their shoes. Mm. They gave the data on their organic export. And they said, in 2015, they had exports of about $27 million to the EU. The following year, 2016, they had orders from the EU for over $300 million for the organic export. This is the EU. We buy the chemicals from those, those folks to pour in, our, pour in the ground and kill our soil and you know, contaminate our, our agriculture. Yeah. They're busy going behind to buy from East Africa millions of dollars worth of organic food. They know the value, they know the health value. Let's look at the larger economic implication, health-wise. Mm. A sick population is a major cost to any government. True. In the US, they literally run away on their um, health, health, health costs. Yeah. Talk to most functional medicine doctors, most integrative medicine doctors. Go online, look at their lectures, their DVDs, their videos. Go to their seminars in the US. Ev almost every one of them is anti-GMO. Right. They see the clinical health impact of GMO. And they will tell you, give you data, once they take their patients off GMOs and put them on organic, 
certain health problems did that reduce or go away completely? I thank you very much, Dr. Patrick. We'll come to you for my item. Of all that thoughts, I know you have a lot of uh, words to reply with, but we'll, we'll take a break and we'll be back. This is Lagos Talk Special on Hafa Ma'aik. Uh, that's Ike Chiku Owankwa in the studio with us, an agriculturist, and of course we have Dr. Patrick Ujuri. Stay with us. We have a comment in regards to what you said with organic um, food. Organic, I have uh, lots of, but yeah, because there's no someone time. said, um, <laughs> good morning, the world is leaving GMO, we are going towards this, and which country is this GMO coming from? So, some people have, and I mean, like you mentioned, in, in, in the UK, in the US, the focus is now on organic food, it's more expensive, but people are, are looking, that's why, even for me, personally, I'd rather buy fruit and veggies, like you said, like, uh, oh sorry, like the caller said, from the roadside farmers, because more, more often than not, they're not imported food, you know. Most of the grapes you eat are GMO, um, grapes. Apple, is GMO. Uh, the, the apple is GMO, so I think it's important to also highlight the fact that it's not that, not to create panic that, oh, you're just about to start eating GMO, mm -hmm. you've probably been eating it for a long time. thing we must know, all please, corn oil, soybean oil, vegetables that we import from Canada, all of them are GMO. GMO. But uh, let me, I think we are off there, yes. uh, when you talk about golden moon, but lots the, the, of... Yeah, yeah, what's online though? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of these cereals we yeah. consume, they are all GMO. Okay. What I want us to understand is there is difference mm -hmm. between the GMO in America yeah. and our own Nigerian research GMO. What's the difference? Now, our own Nigerian research GMO is this. It's just only on that paste. Other paste can still attack the cowpea. Okay. But that uh, 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 borer is the worst that have attacked the cowpea. Now, even if you're using organic means, there are different ways you can use. You have something called EMFE, research from Songhai Farms, Songhai Integrated Farm in Benin Republic. You can use uh, um, neem, neem oil and neem uh, 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 right, water well, shortly. as pesticide. You can use ginger powder and... and, and I, I'm going to put on the mic. I'm going to put on the mic. One second, guys. Yes, <laughs> This is your Love Music, Love Life radio station. You're listening to Smooth 98.1, and this is a part of Smooth Breakfast with Aya. And, and Valentine. And of course, this morning on Lagos Talk Special, we have a very interesting conversation surrounding the GMO, gen genetically modified organisms. And uh, this sparked a reaction uh, from our listeners, especially when it was treated some two weeks back, actually. Uh, the Premium Times report had this headline Despite controversy, Nigeria approves first genetically modified crops. Other stories, uh, uh, newspapers carried it. The Vanguard had this headline on the 9th of January, precisely the same day as, uh, rather, uh, 20 days before this report. They had the genetically modified good, uh, foods safe. Really, that was a question. That's the same question that resonates in the minds of Nigerians. So, uh, for my eye, you had thoughts to share the reaction to Dr. Patrick. But before you get to that, I quickly ask you this. Now, is the major concern for the, uh, for the farmers in Nigeria, because now that we're seeing how you know ways to exploring ways to diversify income and go towards agriculture for revenue generation move away from oil while that has been embraced widely because it, it really would encourage agricultural uh, you know decentralization or if for, for lack of a better term you know to expand our scope and our international relations make sure that we're bringing not just borrowing money but we're bringing funds uh, from selling agricultural produce to other parts of the world but if you travel to places like Dubai, travel to any part of the world precisely, you will find that certain things you buy, like the apple, taste different mm -hmm. from how it tastes in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. The egg, even the egg mm -hmm. that you eat in Nigeria, mm -hmm. yeah. when you travel, once you just cross the shores, you probably go to one shiny place. You know, you find that the eggs look finer, they look bigger, they are clearer. But when you chew it, you find that the taste is almost it almost lacks taste. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now. Having all these, you know, things that we experience, the taste and all those factors, very clear to us. Are Nigerian farmers moving towards GMO precisely for the reason of making more returns? All right, um, well, you see, um, I am an integrated farmer. I use the waste from my animals or my plants. 
and the waste from my plant also I use them for my animal that is organic farming system but I want us to really understand the difference between this GMO we are talking about researched by ABU Zaria mm. and other GMO by Monsanto the one from Monsanto many of many countries complain about them because you cannot replant the seed. Okay, so when you say that Monsanto, who, who are you referring to? Who or what it, it, are you referring it's, an, it's a company, an organization, and uh, the hand of uh, Bill Gates is also there. So many people are trying to um, talk bad about them or even research some things. Are you but a proponent of them or are you a, a, a campaigner? Of no, I'm not a campaigner of them, but okay. just I'm just trying to bring it to light now. Okay. Those Monsanto, they are the producers of glyphosate. Mm. Now, these guys are telling you, if you plant this our seed, GMO seed, you can use this glyphosate, spray it on the plant. The plant will not die, but other weeds will die. And they are making money from the seed. They are also making money from the glyphosate. Mm. And I will still tell you, it is dangerous to human health mm. in the sense that the farmer spraying the glyphosate, mm. the water, because when it rains, it washes the glyphosate to the river or stream where yeah. we still get our water. To drink. Some of the uh, insects mm. also die because of too much, and some bacteria, good bacteria, mm. also die because of the effect of that glyphosate. Right. The one they are, they've researched, we've not started using them in Nigeria. There's no farmer that has planted the GMO in Nigeria. In fact, by June this year, mm. that is when. Uh, uh, they will tell us if we can plant the GMO cowpea or not. For now, it has not been completely approved. You can check that because there are some uh, state agency in variations, you know, that checks the type of seed you plant and other things like that. So they give you that permission. For now, there's no place you get the seed to even plant. That cowpea, as in beans, we are talking about, you plant them. The only benefit of planting that beans is that that borer will not disturb the beans. That is the only benefit. And that is why it's better. And that does not mean that you will not use manure or fertilizer on the beans. Right. That does not mean that you will not till the ground. Weeding, you can either weed mechanically or using chemical. Of which we are telling people, everybody know, using chemical on your weed is bad. Even when you plant vegetable, you see today people eat vegetable and before you know, they start suffering from running stomach and all that. That is because of too much pesticide or herbicide used in those things. You can always use your hoe mm. or do mechanical weeding. So are you agreeing that farmers are, are just concerned about the cost that they expend on weeding? Over, is that a major reason why... 80% of Nigerian are, farmers are not even aware about the GMO problem. All right, let's take some messages from WhatsApp. Now, don't forget, most WhatsApp message is 0809 Um This um, well, this person here says, unfortunately, no, 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 we don't have a name. Um, yesterday from Adeni Ramusaya says, this 21st century generation has gone a long way in a short while to bastardize nature and its original concepts of living standards. Not surprising because the principal essence of organic products is designed to meet up with the population explosion that has skyrocketed on this planet. GMO is a basic necessity in this day and age and adventure has provided the way for discovery in this avenue. Emergency techniques have been implemented to checkmate the rising demand for satisfying hunger. The clear difference here is that a lot of these organic, organic products have a lot of chemicals and substances that have side effects. So the question of having long life similar to Methuselah in the scriptures is out of the question. A very important initiative to propose here is to let the public know about the foods and medication that are organically modified so people with reactive tendencies will have a choice to take in order not to complicate their biochemistry. Austerity is rampant in Nigeria so it doesn't really make a difference because a hungry man is an angry man. <laughs> Temporary down for a second. Uh, we have more messages coming in on WhatsApp. That WhatsApp number is 0809 triple four zero nine eight one. from Meta says, "Good morning, Smooth FM. Please, I have two questions. One, I want to ask Dr. Patrick, uh, but why is it that anytime I drink Gary, I feel like something is burning inside of me whenever I use it to make it a bath? 
I use it to make a bath. I, I purge and all that. All right. uh, second question is, anytime I eat beans, I purge as well, uh, which I do not, uh, and I've stopped eating it unlike before I combined very Maybe beans. Dr. Patrick will give you his um, clinic Please, I want to know. Address. He a lot of questions. <laughs> right, but but, but just before we, um, we go on, because our time is fast spent, I need to talk about the first, um, the first question, because we have this conversation offline with regards to the fact that we need to understand that it's not new in Nigeria. It's so. just the approval because people have to understand this to make better choices so you talked about foods that we import that most of them are actually gmo are, are genetically modified most can you please throw more light on that because of those, so when, you eat, when you eat some cereals like uh, i don't want to mention their names mm. and um uh, you go to some shops you buy soya oil yeah you buy some uh, oil they call uh, um soya, yeah, soya canola soya, uh, lot oil, of yeah. oils mm. like that mm. you know um, most of them are GMO. Mm. Most of them. In fact, I can tell you, ninety percent of them are GMO. Mm. We have a company in Nigeria that produces lots of cereal. Mm. They import maize mm. from USA. Are they GMO maize? GMO wow, they are, <laughs> they are okay. GMO maize. Dr. Patrick, parting shot in thirty seconds, please. Thirty seconds. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> um, there are many reasons why that beans could affect the gentleman who called and he needs to go see his doctor for, for a check. Okay. The issue of GMO is not in me. Go and do your research. Look at countries that have scrapped or banned GMO or burnt the fields of GMO. Look at countries that have built GMO for 20 years. Go to the medical clinical and look at what is going on and what the experts are saying. If you want your health, you must let go of GMO. All right. Thank you, Dr. Patrick. Well, uh, like I, I still said before, the GMO we have in Nigeria now it's not the same thing as the one in the US uh, and uh, we need to encourage our local scientists mm -hmm. they are working and they are really trying to help us eat better have more food you know unlike the things we already have in our shelves all right thank you very much special thanks to our guests who uh, came in uh, despite the odds to increase <laughs> the show dr patrick Gijore, thank you very thank much you, for being here. thank you and uh Fama Ike Chiku Wanko, thank you Fama Ike. thank you very much all right lagos thank you so much for keeping today's with us unfortunately we couldn't take your call all your calls and messages but we definitely appreciate them join us again same time tomorrow morning 6 to 10 a.m for smooth breakfast with valentine and i am and um, on, you can follow us on social media at Ayomairo Essay. <laughs> at Valentine Ohu and Valentine underscore Ohu on um, Twitter. Alright, guys, see you tomorrow.